So, you want to know which characters do the most damage in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. Now, in today's video, we'll be ranking the top 5 damage dealers in the game. Now, to give you all a clear understanding of how these rankings will work, a lot of time and research has gone into the making of this video, all in an effort to make it as objective as possible with these rankings. Of course, I won't just be looking at target damage practice tests, as they are flawed by design, and what is most important is consistent DPS, not which characters have the best 60 second rotation. So we will be analyzing each character's real application in actual quests and how effective they can be there. The 60 second tests will still be taken into account, they just won't be the end all be all criteria. That being said, you can easily clear all the content in this game with any character, so if your favorite doesn't take a spot on the list, do not feel discouraged. Finally, a lot of people will come into this video with already preconceived notion of what is good and what's not, so I hope that you take into account the criteria that me and the theory crafters that have put together this list have set, and that I will be ranking them as objectively as I possibly can. With that being said, let's begin. The fifth character on our list is going to be Narmaya, a character that can deal tons of damage by swapping between her two different stances, while also having extremely powerful skills such as Transient and Setsuna. Her ability to quickly generate butterflies to deal more damage with her skills, while also buffing herself with Dance of Pink Petals to gain Stout Heart and supplementary damage, allowing her to further increase her damage output all the while ignoring the boss's attacks, and having a built-in parry into her kit, makes her a very reliable and powerful character that is able to dish out crazy damage numbers that are going to make the rest of the cast jealous. Narmaya is even able to reach nearly 50 million damage in the 60 damage test, although there is a lot of RNG involved, as she does need to get lucky to not spend her butterflies whenever she uses her skills, as she needs to rely on her signature sigil, that is going to give her a chance to not consume those butterflies to increase her damage. Narmaya's ideal rotation can be a bit tricky to pull off, but her general playstyle is not very difficult, especially if you know some of her tricks, and so you will be rewarded with a very powerful character that also has some fairly decent range for a melee character that is going to look good while destroying enemies. So with the only downside of Narmaya being bad RNG, she will be taking the number 5 spot on the list. Now the next character on the list is going to be Eugen, one of the few ranged characters in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink that can enter sniper mode and aim his weapon, increasing his damage with more powerful shots that he can charge. That being said, Eugen's preferred playstyle when it comes to consistent DPS is actually to spam his grenades. And I know a lot of people were already expecting Eugen to be higher on the list, but there are a few reasons why it doesn't quite make it there. Firstly is that his damage output is actually not that insanely high. It is comparable to that of Narmaya's, but actually ends up being just a little bit lower than hers. That being said, Eugen has a lot more going for him, namely the ability to fight from a range, being able to consistently deal damage to enemies whenever other characters cannot, and having such an easy way to optimize his damage by simply spamming grenades while cancelling the guard, lends itself to a character that, whenever he has the option, even for just a brief moment, he's able to deal tons of damage. The other downside of Eugen is that whenever he throws his grenades, unfortunately Eugen does a rolling backwards animation that will put him away from range from hitting the enemies, and that will of course result in a DPS loss, as you would need to readjust yourself and reposition to be able to keep throwing grenades, or you would have to look out for a perfect spot for you to stand in so that you would be able to hit the boss while still not moving backwards. That being said, Eugen also counts with the ability to paralyze the enemies, which in a DPS test is of course going to be a damage loss, so you don't take that into account into the 60 second test, but of course being able to paralyze enemies from a distance is going to allow Eugen and the rest of his team to increase the damage output and if you time it right you'll be able to deal a lot more damage. So it ends up being one of those instances where the 60 second test does not tell the entire story and Eugen being able to extend the vulnerability period of a boss to deal more damage should not be overlooked. So for all of these reasons, I feel that it is very evident why Eugen is such a powerful character in this game, definitely one of the very best in the entire cast, but it doesn't quite make it to the top 3 damage dealers in Gramble Fantasy Relink. Now the next character on the list is going to be Vasaraga, one of the slowest characters in the entire game. This big fella is all about landing his powerful charged attacks, being able to power through anything, and with his skills he's able to use them to deal damage while at the same time using them as shortcuts to be able to charge up his big charged attack a little bit faster. 
And of course we can't forget about the Immortal Pain buff, which turns Vazaraga into an Undying Beast, as he will actually become unable to die for about 30 seconds, and if you are playing him properly with his own sigil, you'll be able to refund the cooldown of Immortal Pain, so if playing optimally you would be able to have a 100% uptime on the Immortal Pain buff. That being said, as it turns out, it's actually best to play Vazaraga without any skills if you are simply looking to increase your damage output. This is of course done by using the Less is More Sigil, which gives you a huge attack boost that scales with the number of empty skill slots you have. Now while Vazaraga is capable of hitting 50 million damage upwards on the 60 second damage test, I would say that that is not a very good picture of how you're going to be playing Vazaraga because, for one, you won't be using Last Cannon when playing this character in an actual quest because he is so slow. Additionally, because he is such a slow character, a lot of times the bosses won't give you enough time to do as many charged attacks as you would like to have, and so you will find that your DPS burst window is going to greatly vary depending on the boss and the state that they are in, as a lot of times you will only have enough time to be able to land 3 or 4 charged attacks and then maybe land a couple of basic attacks before the boss moves away. And while Vazaraga does have a built-in gap closer into his kit, not needing to use the Battalion Sphere skill, it is still something that you need to charge up and is going to deal a lot less damage compared to his other charged attacks. So ultimately, while Vazaraga is a powerhouse of a character that can deal millions of damage with a single hit, he has a couple of drawbacks that he needs to take into account, which is why he ends up ranking a little bit lower than he otherwise would have been able to rank. Before we continue with the list, let's talk about some characters that did not make the cut for this top 5, and a couple of them might actually surprise you. The first one is going to be Eo, a character that is capable of dealing tons of damage by charging up her stargaze, and despite her basic kit being quite simple, she has a very high skill ceiling where you need to use the appropriate spells at the right time and follow it up with the right rotations, and there's some specific tech to really optimize with Eo that allows her to deal tons of damage, but because so much of her damage output is tied to charging up the stargaze, she actually doesn't perform too well in the 60 second DPS test. However, throughout the course of an entire hunt, I do believe that she excels, especially with her ability to paralyze enemies, and she is a very very powerful character, especially in the hands of someone that can get the most out of her. Now the next character is going to be Charlotta. I know a lot of you are probably surprised, but Charlotta has a lot of combo cancels being able to always stay in noble stance to deal as much damage as possible with the aerial attacks and being able to cancel all of her skills into the air lunges while trying to maintain optimal DPS is actually no easy feat. I've been playing a lot of Charlotta recently, both on and off my live streams, and despite her being so easy to pick up and use, I haven't been able to master her yet. She's capable of dealing upwards of 42 million damage in the 60 second damage test, and the best thing about it is that Charlotta actually doesn't rely on using 4 damaging skills, so she could use one of those slots to go with the invincibility so that she has a way to deal damage even when the boss is in bloodthirst and doing mechanics. She was very very close to making it into the top 5, but sadly she didn't quite make the cut. But if some characters on the list were to be nerfed, Charlotta would be guaranteed. Now the next character on the list is going to be the Captain. Actually, I'm lying here. It's not the Captain, it's Jita specifically. You see, Gran and Jita have different combos, and because of that they also have different combo cancels, and some skilled players have been testing out the different cancels for each of the different versions of the Captain, and as it turns out, Jita actually deals a ton of damage being able to hit upwards of 40 million damage in the 60 second damage test, although the cancels to be able to achieve this are very very hard to pull off. Apparently there's also some weird stuff going on with the Captain, where the frame rate actually affects their damage output, and it should be noted that whenever you go with this playstyle, you'll be foregoing a lot of your skill utility that the captain has access to. So there is a bit of a trade off when going all in on damage with Jita. Personally, I was very surprised by this, but it's great to see the community learning new tech for each of the different characters. But sadly, it wasn't quite enough to make the captain enter the top 5. Now the number 2 spot for the highest damaging character in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is going to go to Percival. 
a character that is all about using his skills to be able to charge up his schlatt a lot faster to deal as much damage as possible. And thanks to the skill cancel being able to dodge out of one of these skills to get the charged attack a lot faster, while not putting that skill on cooldown, effectively being able to charge up his schlatt faster every single time is going to ensure that Percival's damage output will rise exponentially especially thanks to his buff that is able to give him supplementary damage, which will stack with the supplementary damage sigils, resulting in some crazy damage numbers. Additionally, there is also the special tech where you can use the Rotor Wireball, the Flame Wheel skill that has a bug that you can abuse to raise its damage cap, and as a result end up dealing nearly 10 million damage in combination with this and the Schlatt alone. On top of that, Percival has a built-in parry that is very easy to use, so that will allow him to have a higher uptime on the boss and deal as much damage as possible. As a character, Percival is intended to have a playstyle that is focused on long commitment attack, but because of these advanced techs, he ends up becoming one of the strongest characters dealing broken amounts of damage. Keep in mind that there is a chance that the developers might patch the flame wheel bug, but even if they do so, if they do not patch the skill cancel which a lot of characters are currently using to increase their damage output, Percival would still remain as one of the strongest in the entire game. He likely wouldn't remain in the number 2 spot, but I am confident that he would still be a very powerful character, and so it is with great confidence that I can say that I believe Percival is the second strongest character in the entire game. And the number one highest damage dealing character in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is going to be, and I know a lot of you already saw this coming, Rackham. That's right, his air shotgun playstyle just deals insane amounts of damage, and while it may be a difficult playstyle to properly execute on the training dummy to get the most damage output out of it, it's actually a lot easier to perform this against the bosses as their hitbox is going to be much larger, and so the challenge there is actually just trying to make sure that you don't get hit while performing this. The damage numbers that you can get out of this thing are absolutely ridiculous, going with the same idea as Vazaraga using less is more to not use any skills to boost the damage output of your character. But because Rackham's Aerial Barrage has the same damage cap as Bullseye Blast, which would normally be the biggest damaging tool that Rackham has, that you even have an entire meter that you need to manage to be able to properly use it, but with the Aerial playstyle you can just keep on spamming this, you'll be doing it much faster, much more consistently, and again the only damage downside is that you'll be up close to the monster so you may get hit in the process and you actually need to go up to the monster to be able to use this. That being said, because Rackham is a ranged character whenever there are moments when the boss goes away and he enters bloodthirst, Rackham will actually still be able to damage them from a distance and because he is using less is more, his basic burst attack is still going to do a lot of damage. He's just a very solid character all around that certainly would not be placing this high on the list without the aerial shotgun, but whenever you get these damage numbers, I've even seen a video of someone getting 80 million damage in the 60 second damage test, which is just absurd considering that the majority of the cast cannot even reach 40 million, and Rackham is just out here doing twice as much by just jumping and doing the same attack over and over again. So hopefully you understand why I ranked these characters the way that I did, and if you disagree with any of my placements, let me know in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching, my name is Dark Hero, and as always, happy hunting!